Good morning. Good morning, good day, and welcome to those of you that are in this room and those of you that are joining us from around the world, wherever you are tuning in from at this time, to watch and listen, listening by radio. It's good to have you joining us again. It is a unique moment in the history of the human existence in time on the earth. Not a lot of persons are capable of even hearing what I just said a while ago, much less to understand that and to see that playing out around us moment by moment and day by day. A lot of us even who say that we are of God, we have gotten caught up with what is natural, that we become blind, we become deaf, and we become numb to who God is and what God is about. One of the things that the scripture talks about that would happen in the latter times, and it would have to be with people who, who either pretend to know God, or they have drifted away from the faith. And what the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul said that would have happened in the last days, that their conscience would be snared with a hot iron. And I know what that looks like. I have had the experience many times um, when I was in Jamaica, ironing a shirt or a pants, and the iron was too hot for the material because you have different types of material. And based on the material, you would have to gauge the iron to deal with that material. And as you put that, the, the iron out, and that clothes is now destroyed. Their conscience is snared. Many believers, their conscience is snared. With a, like, like a hot iron going against a material that is too hot for. They're not capable of hearing God any longer. Even if they were hearing God, they do not care to hear God anymore. And they will show up in meetings like this. Like many, many of you in this room, you do that. You continue to do that. I see some of you, you know. And I am hoping that it, when you come and the Holy Spirit is speaking through me, because some of you think that I'm an entertainer. Some of you are impressed with how I talk. And that's all that it is. And at first when I begin to see that, I said, how could that be? And then as I'm reading the scripture... In the book of Ezekiel, the Bible said that they would come and they would sit before him. And God says, they do not. They're not hearing your words. They're not hearing what you're saying. They love the sound of your voice. And I said, wow. You mean people would come in front of you not to hear the word of God, but because of how you sound. They like that. They did it to Ezekiel. It's in the Bible. And when it's in the Bible, it continues to happen. There's a lot of people who are impressed with my voice. <laughs> what do you think, how do you think that is going to end if you only care about to hear my voice and not the words? that my voice is carrying. And there's a lot of preachers that people are impressed with how they talk. And so I continue to say, even if persons in front of me come in person, refuse to hear what the Spirit is saying in this season, I say to those of you that are watching, whether you're watching in the United States, whether you're watching in the Caribbean, 
in Africa, in Europe, wherever you're watching from. I hear some of you. I hear some of you. I hear your testimony. I hear, I see your comments from time to time. And I know that the Spirit of God is using this medium to impact your life. Do not allow anything or anyone to stop you from coming and growing and, 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 and becoming that which God has already worked out in Christ. The scripture says in Ephesians that we are God's workmanship. God's workmanship. God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. And so, as we come together today, yesterday we were in our time of corporate fasting. There are those of you that were watching that you also become a part of that. You're in fasting wherever you are. And I went back over Colossians, not Colossians, but 2 Corinthians chapter 13 as the Holy Spirit instructed me to do it. I want to read it again. I want to read it again. I want to read it in the presence of these people and some of you that are hypocrites in this room. I'm going to read it in the presence of the hypocrites again because hypocrites think that they're going to get away. There are those of you, even in this room, and I, I remember one particular I, I'm not going to call them sister and brother anymore because they are not. But one particular lady that was at Midway. And her remarks was, the things that I'm teaching and preaching, it's not really, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what she said, it's not really necessary. I am the one that is making a fuss of it. Do you think that God write, God inspire the writing of the scriptures for joke? In John chapter 12, Jesus Christ said to the Jews, these were people who were first in line, not because of favoritism, but because of the faithfulness of God out of a covenant that he made with their fathers. And Jesus says, I will not judge you, but the words, the words that I speak will judge you because they are not mine, but the one who sent me. He, he gave me commandment of what I should say. You think that this is a joke? And because preachers are not preaching it and I'm teaching it, you oh, I am making a fuss. It's not really necessary because God is not like man. You, you get that right, but you don't understand what you're saying. If you knew that God is not like man, you would really fear him. Because men, men are liars. Men compromise. You can bribe them. But God, and many of you take God's mercy for granted... And you come Sunday after Sunday, Saturday after Saturday when we have our fasting meeting or whatever. And you continue to remain in your cynical, hypocritical state. And taking it for granted and think that you're going to escape the judgment of God. The scripture says why we don't see certain judgment manifesting now is that God is long-suffering. God is patient. Why? Because he doesn't rather that you die in your sin, but that you repent. Repent. So do not take the patience of God for granted. And do not think that God is slack concerning his promises. Every day you're given an opportunity to repent and to stay in righteousness. Grow in righteousness. 
not flip-flopping. Today you're in, tomorrow you're out. Today you're in, tomorrow you're out. You stay. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When you see the day fast approaching, you stay in godliness and holiness. And the Holy Spirit that I'm talking about, he has been given to us to keep us in truth. And the problem with a lot of us, we do not, some of us do not have the Holy Spirit in the first place. Those of us who the Holy Spirit, we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. As, the, as I was talking to that sister yesterday, Sister Natasha, and I said, I, 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 I was congratulating her and her experience in the baptism of the Holy Spirit two Sundays ago, I think. It was on the 8th, that Sunday. She got filled. Dawn got filled. And I don't know who else, but she, and I, and, I, and I said, how has it been? She said, oh, she said, it is such a difference. She said, even reading the Bible now, it, it, there's just, I said, that's it. When you experience the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it changes everything. And then she said, the thing that I want is to maintain it, is to maintain it. And I said, one of the way that you maintain your experience in the Holy Spirit is daily acknowledging him. I said, even when you are not able to hear him speaking to you yet, recognize him. Recognize him. And the more you do that, you're now setting up yourself to become more sensitive. More sensitive. And you completely pull away from everything that is natural. And it's so sensitive to the spirit that when you touch the natural, you know. You know immediately. This is not a joke, people. That's, that's, that's on record in heaven and everywhere. You hear me saying that again, and I will keep on saying it. it is, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. So I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 13 again. And as I said yesterday, that one of the things that you need to understand about the Corinthian church Every single one of the church, churches that the apostles wrote to, whether it's Paul, Peter, John, James, Jude, every single one of the church or churches, you can find them in the book of Acts. The church in Philippi, the church in Ephesus, the church in Corinth, the church in Galatia, Thessalonica. Remember in the book of Acts chapter 17, the brethren in Thessalonica was more noble than those. The, the Berians rather were more noble than those who were in Thessalonica. Every single one of them. What I'm, what I'm trying to show you is that the apostles went into this region. They preached the gospel of the kingdom that's what they preach they did not preach the garbage that preachers are preaching today they did not preach self-help they did not give people gimmickry they preached the gospel of the kingdom because when you are sent that's what you do you preach what you're instructed to preach when you are when you are not sent and you send yourself, you try to please people because you are supported by the people. But when you're sent, you're supported by the one who send you. So that even if the people that you're sent to reject you, you stand firm. Corinthian church was very carnal. You can see it in the reading of the two letters. That they were very carnal. But if you notice how the Spirit used Paul to speak to them, he didn't put up with their carnality. He warned them. And notice, 
one of the warning that he gave in chapter 13, the final writing, the final letter, the second letter. He said, this will be the third time I am coming to you. How many times have I come to you? How many times have I stood in front of you and I never compromise the word? I never hold back anything that the Spirit wants to say through me. I give the Holy Spirit permission to say it. That many, of you, many times, many of you walk out of here offended because I give the Holy Spirit permission to say what he wants to say. I don't cut no corner. How many times have I come to you? He said, this, is, this will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word shall be established. He says, I have told you before and foretell as if I were present in the body the second time. And now being absent, I write to those who have sinned. I am warning those who have sinned. I'm warning those who are hypocrites. I'm warning those who are pretending to be saved and you're not saved. You're pretending to know God and you don't know God. You're pretending to be a part of the body of Christ and you're not. I'm warning you. Those of you who have sinned, he says, before, you have sinned before, and to the rest, that if I come again, I will not spear. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For though he, Christ, was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. Yet he live by the power of God. How are we supposed to live also? For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Examine yourself, therefore. Examine yourself. Verse 5. Examine yourself. I wonder if some of you are even looking at the scriptures. When you take all your phone, I wonder if even while many of you sit in here and I'm teaching and you have all your phone, are you, are you reading the scriptures with me? Are you playing game? Candy Crush or whatever game you're, you're addicted to. Because many of you are addicted. You're not only addicted to your phone, you're addicted to games that you play. And you're not addicted to the word. Any addiction outside of being addicted to the word, it's dangerous. Let me say that again. Any addiction outside of being addicted to the word, it's dangerous. Because what do you think, what do you think addiction is about? What do you think the compulsion of the soul is about? It is it, it's used by Satan to destroy the human. Your compulsion for drugs, your compulsion for sex, whatever addiction it is, Satan uses it to destroy you. And it came about after man's sin. Because after man's sin, man was completely exposed. He was naked. Satan knew exactly what to do continuing from there. Examine yourselves. Only those who are truly born again can examine themselves. Examine them. Examine yourselves. For what? As to whether you are in, you are in, the fate. Test yourselves. Now, now, when God commands you to examine yourself and test yourself, you do not want God to examine you in this case or test you. Because you're not going to like it. If you notice throughout the scriptures, God doesn't humble anybody. Listen to me carefully. Listen. God doesn't humble anybody. You know what he did? You notice what he did? What he, what he did and what he continued to, he commands us to do what? Humble yourself. Why would you be able to humble yourself? What would give you the ability to humble yourself? And notice in the scripture, who, whomever God humble, notice. God humble, no, 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 when God humble you, I exalt you. When, notice God humble, who, 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 who in the scripture we saw God humble and how did it end? 
One of the clear, clear picture is Daniel in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, and remember, God warned him before. Because God don't just come and, ex- and, 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 and dish out judgment. God always warns, and he 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 warns. And after so many warnings, and he realized that you're taking the warning for granted, then judgment has to follow. And if he has to use you to be an example, he will, as he did with Ananias and Sapphira. God humbled Nebuchadnezzar after God warned him. He went out and in his pride, look at this great Babylon that I, Nebuchadnezzar, have built. The Bible said the moment the words came out of his mouth, the angel of the Lord spoke and he got, watch this. The human heart, the mind of a human was taken away from him and the mind of an animal. And the king left the palace and went out for seven, how many years? Seven years. And at, the Bible said his, his body grew here and, and the, his nails was like claws and eat grass among the animals. Ticks, ticks. I hope when I talk, and even some of you that is talking, you know, I hope you're getting it, you know. And the Bible said at the end of those days, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lift up mine eyes. You see, if he had listened to God before, he didn't have to go through that. When God humble you, it's dangerous. So when God said to you, examine yourself, I beg of you examine yourself when God said to you test yourself I beg of you test yourself and how do you do it notice you know it says examine yourself as to whether you're in the faith the question is what is the faith test yourself do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless is if you don't know that Jesus Christ is in you you are this qualified but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified go to Hebrews chapter 12 with me please Hebrews chapter 12 Verse 1, therefore, we also since, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of weaknesses. Now, notice the Holy Spirit through the right of this book is talking about a cloud of weaknesses. What is that coming off? Many of you, I'm sure, because we love to read about faith, we love to talk about faith, we love to, you know, we get all excited when we hear about faith, but yet we don't know what it is, we don't care to even come into it, because when we think, many of us, when we talk about faith and argue and, 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 and looking into faith, it's how we can use it to get things. We don't care about it in pleasing God. Here. In chapter 12, he talks about the great cloud of weakness. Why? Because this is not the first chapter that faith is going to be talked about. And, and chapter 11, is, 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 this is what is coming off. Because in chapter 11, he talk about all these elders and every single person. And then come down into verse, into, it, 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 into the 20th, 30th verses. And he says, he says, he says what more shall I say? And he, he didn't have time to list all the persons. So he just put all of them name in a, in, 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 a, in a nutshell, if you may. Samson, Gideon, Barak. And he named all of them. And he says, all these true faith. 
So they, these persons now, they are a great cloud of witnesses. Witness to God's faithfulness. Witness to God's plans and purposes being fulfilled in their life. They run their race and they are finished. And they are now a great cloud of witness. So when you play around, you, you will have absolutely no excuse once you read that Bible and hear the word. We have a great cloud of witnesses. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and Moses and Joshua and Elijah and Elisha and Jeremiah and Gideon and Barak and Samson and name all of them. We have a great cloud of witnesses. That this thing called faith, it's not a joke. They experience it. They experience the power. They experience the transformation. And they lived it out and they finished their race. And now they're there as a witness. That when you are making excuses, they're saying, shut your mouth. You can become what God wants you to be. You can do what God wants you to do. You can finish your race because look at me. I did it. And they were all persecuted. We look of V and excuse. Or if you know what I'm going through. Have you read what some of them went through? When we were on our way coming, and when we got on 427, the book of Acts is being read when we left home. So when we get to the 427, it's chapter 23 the reading entered into. And Paul went up to Jerusalem. After the Spirit spoke, the even in chapter 21, the Spirit spoke that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Because if you go up to Jerusalem, these are the things that are going to happen to you. But the man no care about in life. The man care about finishing his race. So he said, whether debt, he said, even when the people crying, when he said that, I know that some of you will never see my face again. They were crying. He said, stop crying. <laughs> Don't you cry. And when he went up and they arrested him, the Bible said when the centurion, remember when the centurion, they were beating Paul. Because when he saw what was happening and he sent the soldiers to get Paul, the Bible said because they had beaten him so much that Paul could not even walk. The soldiers had to carry him. And when they put him down, he continued declaring the things concerning Christ. And some of you, it's like a food you can't get fine now and again, and you are give up on the faith. One shoes, a dress that you saw at winners, and you didn't get it, you're depressed about. What did they go through? The great cloud of weaknesses. And they're shouting out to us and saying, guess what? You can, you will, and you must. You do not have an option. Because if you think you have an option, hell is the option. I can live holy. I can live righteous. I can live perfect. And I will. And I must. Because without holiness, no man shall see God. So you need to put all those lust aside. Put sex. You're going to give up God. You're going to give up faith in God for a one night stand. Keep your body. Lock up your body. Lock up. Cut off your penis if you have to. Because you can live without it. Stitch up whatever need to stitch up. Sex. It's not your purpose or your destiny. You see Paul. He was never married. He has no children. And he didn't care to. He said, I wish that all of you could be like me. <laughs> and the Bible also said that even when you're married, live as though you're not. What does that look like? What does that look like? Because in some of our marriages, sex is an issue. 
and hear them. Hear, hear, hear these people who said that they are in Christ. I tell me, say, that, you know, based on statistics in the world, that the two, what is three? Is it three? Three big issue in marriage is money, sex, and what is the other one? And for you as a believer, sex is not supposed to be an issue. Because the scripture even said that if it comes time that you decide that you're going to go on fasting and you do not want to have any sexual involvement, you come to an agreement. If you can't control your body, you're dead while you live. You're supposed to control your sexual desires. If you cannot rule over your desires, you're not fit to represent the kingdom. If you can't rule over your desires, you will never rule over demons. You will never rule over sickness and disease. Your body is the first test for you. And if you can master your own body, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, watch this now, let us lay aside every weight and watch this, and the sin, what is that sin? What is that sin that is so easily besetting you, that you're in, you're out, you're up, you're down? What is that sin? You can lay it aside. If the scripture say you can, you can. Lay aside, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And watch this, watch, watch this, watch this. Looking unto Jesus. Why do we need to look to him? Because he's the author and he is the... Of our faith, who himself, Jesus Christ himself, for the joy that was set before him. Watch this, he endured the cross. So when Jesus was in the process of being crucified, Kingsley, he himself was thinking about certain things that was in front of him. When you're tempted, when loss won't control you, think about what you will lose if you give in to the loss. Too much to gain. So you shut it down. You say, if I have to live without a man for the rest of my life, so be it. It will not kill me. Not having sex never kill nobody. Having sex kill you. You know many sexual transmitted diseases out there? And there's some of them, there's absolutely no cure that when you get it, if God doesn't heal you. Remember, remember this brother that I came in contact with shortly after we started the ministry here. Up until now, I think his wife still hate him. And they're supposed to be believers, you know. And one of the reasons why the wife was so upset with him, he went and have extramarital affair and come back with sexual transmitted disease and pass it on to her. And come out in one preach with your sexual disease self. <laughs> and because I didn't give him opportunity to preach, he left gone, bought him place and go buy a frock. I wonder if he got healed. I hope he does. You think that this thing is a joke? Lay aside. What the scripture say, people? Lay aside. What the scripture say? Lay aside the weight and the sin. What, 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 is, what, what is that sin, as I said? What is it that Satan is using to tempt you? Don't cover it up and be no hypocrite. And if you realize that you can't do it by yourself, the Bible says confess your fault to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Not cover it up because if you cover it up, Satan is going to use it and kill you. Lay aside. That's a commandment. That's not a suggestion. Lay aside. What is your addiction? What is your addiction? Is it addiction to drugs? 
It is addiction to sex. It's addiction to power. It's addiction to money. What is it, addiction? You've got to confront it like David confronting Goliath. And you've got to bring it down. David had five stones. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Word, and the blood. Bring it down. And David didn't even need to use the five stone. One. Makorabo shataya baba. One. And then he says, now, what is going to encourage you in the process? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. You know what author mean? He's the one who initiates it. And then he finishes it. Hear what the scriptures say. He who begun a good work in you. Will complete it. Glory to God. Whatsoever God starts, God always, always, Sister Jeanette, always, He always finishes it. He always finishes it. He does start a job and leave it halfway. He's not that kind of a chaka chaka God. He is the author and he is the finisher. So as long as I keep my eyes on him, I will finish my race. It may take me a while to come into certain things, but I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm going to keep on running. Who for the joy that was set before him. What should be the joy that is in front of us? What should be the joy that is in front of us? Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And one of the things that you need to understand about the cross here, you know, why the scripture talk about him even enduring the cross? It's not just him being nailed to the cross. You and I have been introduced to pictures of Jesus on a cross. Or on the cross, right? And every one of these pictures that we see with Jesus on the cross, the person who does the picture, does the painting, does whatever, they put a a nice loin cloth around him. Not nagosa. Jesus was crucified naked. For the joy that was set before him, he endured what the cross would bring to him. Hallelujah to God. Notice, despising, what was the shame about the cross? It's not him being nailed, being naked. Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 2, was naked and not ashamed. Now, that state, it's a shame. He despised the shame. And watch this. And has sat down. You You saw the joy that was in front of him? He sat down. Where? At the right hand of the throne of God. What is the joy that is in front of us? That you're, you're ready to give up. Not money, not sex, not power, nothing in this life can be compared to it. And I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And when we come to faith in him, we're invited to sit with him.
So not only is he at the right hand of the Father, I am in Christ. I am. The right hand is a right hand. It's, an, it's, it's, a, it's a position of honor. It is the greatest honor that a king can bestow yes. on a person. Yes. That's why James and John mother went to Jesus and said, Lord, I'm asking you, let, let my son, one sit on the right hand. Jesus said, that position is not mine to give. It's the father. Lay aside the sin, the weight, and the sin. Because you see, the concept, the idea, we're going to read a scripture here. The concept and the idea here, laying aside the weight and the sin, when a person is going to run, if you notice, they will come on even on the... Wherever they're coming and they have uncertain thing, but when they come, you see they start to, because they're, 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 pre they're preparing themselves to run. And you notice how they are tired to run because you're running that there is nothing that is going to hold you back. There's nothing to catch, no wind or whatever. So you're, you're free to run the, between the wind. So in the spirit, they are weight that Satan bring. Because Satan knows that naturally or spiritually, you can't run with weight. And God says, when Satan bring the weight, you don't have to keep it. You can lay aside. If I don't shut my mouth, something is going to explode inside here. So, we want to read from chapter 10 of Luke. It noise. <laughs> it's ten. <laughs> we stopped at nine yesterday, right? So it's ten. We're starting with ten today. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. You alone just reach up to ten. Makura Bakashata. And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is truly great, mm. Mm. but the laborers are few. Oh, my God. Therefore... Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his <laughs> harvest. <laughs> his <laughs> harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you. <laughs> I send you. <laughs> out as lambs among wolves. <laughs> Carry neither money bag, <laughs> knapsack, <laughs> nor sandals. And greet no one along the road. Hmm. But, whether, but whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. Hmm. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. Verse 6 again. And if a son of peace is there, <laughs> your peace will rest on Notice it. Notice, it didn't say the son of peace, a son of peace. So we're supposed to be, read on, brother. <laughs> and it will return to you. Mm. 
and it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Hmm. Do not go from house to house. <laughs> Do not go from house <laughs> to house. Whatever city you enter hmm. and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. What are you being fed today? <laughs> oh, Father. And heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom mm -hmm. of God has come near you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than, Sodom than that city. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida, for the mighty works which have been done in you had been done in Tyre and Sodom they would have repented long ago. Hmm. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you and you, Carpernium, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears me, he who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who hmm. sent me. Hmm. Hmm. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, and Christ <laughs> said to them, <laughs> <laughs> I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing <laughs> shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Nevertheless, do mm. not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. The spirits are subject to you. <laughs> wow. Mm. Rejoice, but rather rejoice because your names are written <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> Signing my name right there. You see the joy right that is set before you? <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the mm -hmm. spirit and said, mm -hmm. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things Hallelujah. have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is mm. except mm. the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Reveal him. Reveal him to me, Lord. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, he turned to his disciples mm -hmm. and said privately, mm -hmm. blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. Oh my God. For I tell you that many prophets and kings <laughs> have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. Wow. And to hear what you hear and have not heard it. 
Woo. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, mm -hmm. saying, a certain lawyer. Yes. A certain lawyer stood hmm. up and tested him, saying, hmm. teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What a liar. <laughs> <laughs> he said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Mm -hmm. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he, but hmm. he wanting to justify mm -hmm. himself, yeah. said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, yeah. and stripped him of his clothing, wounded, wounded him, him, and departed, leaving him half, half dead. dead. Wow. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now by chance, a mm -hmm. certain priest mm -hmm. came down that road. <laughs> and when he saw him, the one that was beaten and left half dead, mm. he passed by on the other side. <laughs> Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and pass by on the other side. <laughs> but a certain Samaritan, uh. as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds. Yes. Pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him, take care of him. Mm -hmm. And whatever more you spend, hmm. when I come again, when I come again, mm -hmm. I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves, the thieves. And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha hmm. welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at <laughs> Jesus' feet and heard his word. Why are you in the room today? Mm. <laughs> yes. But Martha was distracted <clears throat> with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about mm -hmm. many things, but one thing is needed. Hmm. One thing is needed. Oh my God. And Mary has chosen that Father. part, which will not be taken away from her. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Bless you. One thing is needed, not two, not three. One thing is needed. David says, one thing of I desire of the Lord, and that one thing I will seek after. Stand with me, please. And we're going to pray together. Whew.
you know, I, 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 I take note that on several occasions, there are certain things that Jesus said to the disciples, and it was in private. Why? Even in this room, we have people, you know, maybe visiting or whatever, coming among us. They're not born again. And many of them are comfortable just coming because, you know, there, there are people, we grew up in a certain culture, like the Caribbean. It's not just Jamaica, the Caribbean, where they start us out with Sunday school. I don't know if they do it in Africa. They, they start sending you as a young child to Sunday school. So you grew up with that mentality that I need to go to church. And then there are those special church moments. Easter. Um, and Christmas. New Year's. Hmm? Oh yeah, Good Friday is, is in Easter, right? And so those are those special Sunday because you have certain people, if they didn't go to church, as they call it, any time of the year, there, there are certain time that they have to, I, I must be in church because we treat the building as the church. And yet, we're far from God. And there are times, things that the Spirit is saying, even why some people leave here offended, and some people hate me, and some people want to kill me, and some people want to do the things I do. They are strangers to God. They are strangers to the word, and they should never, they should have never been in my presence in the first place. Many times I sense that in the spirit that I only want to talk to those who are within the kingdom. It's a private moment. You know that he never talked about his dead publicly? Never. Read the scriptures carefully. Any time he spoke about it was privately to the disciple. And he told the disciple, don't tell nobody. <laughs> so that's why when certain things happen, they, even if they didn't believe when he was telling them now, when it happened, they should be more assured that he has been telling us all along. And one of the things that he keep on emphasizing on, and they didn't believe, that I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. But on the third day, I'm coming back. I'm just saying. So today, as Mary sat at Jesus' feet, behold how beautiful are the feet of those. I have some ugly toes. But it's not the physical feet that Jesus is talking about. <laughs> He's talking about what you are carrying. Did you come today to sit at my feet? Mary, Mary has chosen the better part. What was the better part? She sat at his feet to hear his word. And it is that one thing that cannot be taken away from you. Your clothes can be taken away. Your money can be taken away. Your house can be taken away. Your car can be taken away. Your job can be taken away. Everything in this life can be taken away from you. But it's when you receive the word of God, I'll win then kill you. They cannot take it away from you. How important is the word? How do we treat the word? That one thing that cannot be taken away. Let us talk to the Father. Talk to about, talk, praying to the purpose of why we come in this room. Praying to what we should be experiencing while we're in the room. How are we going to be leaving this room? Pray for one another. Pray. For those that are watching online and those of you that are watching online, pray for those who are in this room. Pray one for another. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. As we pray together.
We pray as individuals. When we got up this morning. But Father, we come together in this room today as your people. May we be one voice. May we be one voice. Giving off one sound. Father, one sound. And in order for that to be true, Father, one faith, one hope, one baptism, one Lord, one spirit, one God and Father, above all, in us all and through us all. Father, today, as we come together in this room, as we come together around our television, as we come together around our radio, our computer, whatever, Father, format our, our, our platform that we're watching from, Father, thank you for another opportunity that you have given unto us to come together. Let, may we not take it lightly as you entered into Mary and Martha's house and Lazarus was their brother. And when Martha saw you coming in, she got busy, she got cumbered, she got distracted. She got distracted, but Mary stayed focused. Mary stayed focused. Mary stayed focused. Father, I shut down every distracting spirit. I shut down every distracting spirit. I shut down every distracting spirit in this room and wherever people are watching from right now. I shut it down in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release the Holy Spirit of God. I release the Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, we give you freedom. We give you, we give you freedom. We give you freedom to be at liberty today, to move in this room, to speak, to move beyond this room, to speak to people, to touch us like we have never been touched before. Deal with us. Exactly the way that the Father has willed for you to deal with us today. As we read, Father, in Romans chapter 8, that by your will, the Holy Spirit make intercession for us. Not of his own will, but by your will, he make intercession for the saints. With groanings which cannot be articulated in human language. Holy Spirit, you're here among us today. And you're here to do the will. Yes. You're here to do the will of the one who sent you. May we agree with you. May we agree with you. You're here today to set somebody free from loss. Whatever their lust is. You're here today to set somebody free from whatever the bondage, whatever, the, whatever it is that Satan has brought to their life. Because you are the spirit of God. You are the spirit of God. You are the spirit of God. You are the spirit of the Lord. You have been sent with certain authority. You have been sent with certain abilities, certain power. Holy Spirit, may we agree with you today for you to set us free. May we agree with you today for you to touch us in a way that it's impossible for us to ever go back to where we were. Holy Spirit, I pray that like a blanket, your presence will cover this room. People will receive it. People will experience it. Your presence will cover that living room, cover that kitchen, cover that bedroom, cover that wherever somebody's watching from right now. If they're in a car, cover that car. Those that are listening by radio, cover. They will experience the tangible, the tangible. May people be healed in whatever area they need healing today, Father. May people be delivered. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. He has anointed me to set the captive free. Open the prison door. Yes. 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 Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Holy Spirit, 
how I honor you, how I appreciate you, how I receive you. Acknowledge that without you, we are joking. Without you, we are playing with ourselves. Without you, it's impossible for us to touch God. It's impossible for us to experience God. It's impossible for, it's impossible for God to touch us without you. When God touches us, he touches us through you. When we touch God, we touch him through you. It's the Holy Spirit. This is not a place where we close the door on you. This is a place where you have liberty, you have freedom to speak, to move, and to do whatever the Father's will is for you in this moment. Father, there are things that we're struggling with that we don't have to continue to struggle with it. We can lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us and run the race with patience, with endurance, yes. with endurance, yes. with endurance. Yes. You're going to wear out the devil. When the devil thinks that you're going to give up, you're, even when you fall down, you get up again, brush off yourself, and keep on running. Keep on running. Keep on running. There is a race that I must finish. Not maybe, I must finish it. That's my destiny. That's my destiny. And nobody will stop me from fulfilling my destiny. So Father, thank you. That today, in this moment, in this room, and beyond this room, wherever people are watching from, lives will never, ever be the same again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your, for your, for your faithfulness to the Father's will, and the Father's plans, and the Father's purpose. Your agreement. You're not in opposition. Thank you. I pray that somebody will experience baptism in you today. Holy Spirit, Jesus, you are the baptizer. May someone be open for you to baptize them today. Today. And not many days from now. May we experience and those, Father, those of us who have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, dip us again. Dip us again. We need to be emerged again. We need to be submerged again. And Father, we need to be saturated that as we go, we are literally dripping you're literally dripping. Father, thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this day. Thank you for what you are doing and what you will continue to do as we open ourselves up to your spirit. In Christ's name, I pray and tell you thanks. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Seated if you can.
It's good for me to be here, to be able to stand in front of these cameras and know that there are hundreds of people that the Spirit through this medium is impacting their lives for an eternal, for an eternal reward. A reward that cannot be taken away, it cannot fade away. And the reason why it's good for me to stand here, it's because of God, it's because of the things of God, because of the things of God. Because of the things of God. Um, before I made mention of this, there were some persons, there were some persons that if they're going to go away, they would always reach out to let me know, because I don't require that you necessarily tell me where you're going. But because we are meant to be a family, and in the natural, if you're living in a home, in a house, with other family members, and you're going out, the right, the good thing to do is to let somebody know that you're not there. I'm going out for a, a little. And there are some individuals that I know that when they say certain things, they're only saying it to me. So if you don't give me permission to say it to anybody else, I'm not going to say it. The persons who get pregnant among us, they tell me. They didn't give me no whatever to advertise it because some people don't want you to know that they're pregnant. Right? So, they get to the point where they have baby also. They reach out and say, Pastor, baby, come. They not tell me if you come announce that baby come. So, I'm saying all of that for you to get something now that if you want me to share with the congregation, you need to let me know. So, I'm saying all of that now to say this. Continue to give Thanks for Sister Beverly Smith healing. She is in need of two brand new kidneys. She's on dialysis. None of God pitney. Not supposed to connect up to no machine. Right? Me say, none of God pitney. Translate for somebody that is watching. <laughs> if you're a child of God, there are certain things that you're not supposed to partake of in the world. Next, Sister Hamilton. Anybody know? Juliet Hamilton. Anybody miss her? Anybody reach out to her? Yeah. Very good. All right? Pray for her. Keep her in prayer. She's believing God for a heart healing. Physical heart. All right? I prayed with her the other day. A couple of days ago I spoke with her. Calling to check on her. I prayed with her. I believe that the healing is already done. I now we had a manifestation. He's done. Boop, done. When, when, when a sniper, when, when a sniper fire certain bullet, Marlon, them now ask no question. They now wait for no manifestation. Because when the bullet go between your eyes, me want to see you get up and walk again. Jesus Christ is a sniper. 
And when he destroyed the works of the devil, he didn't miss. God declared from Genesis chapter 3 that he was going to crush the head of the serpent. The head of the serpent is the authority. It's the ability of Satan to do things. So Jesus crushed his head. So Satan doesn't have any more authority over you when you are in Christ. Why are we behaving like he does? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Sister Smith, if you're listening to us right now, Sister, receive two brand new kidneys. When? No. Sister Hamilton? A brand new heart. Brand new heart. And I'm not asking anybody if God can do that. What are you talking about? Sister Kim, whenever she's not going to be here, like even on a fasting Saturday. So yesterday she wasn't here. She texted me. Sometimes it's after I see the text because, you know, I don't get up looking at the phone and stuff like that. But she does. Brother Wes wasn't here yesterday. He texted and he said, you know, I'm not going to be here. And a few other people. And, and for some of them, like, you know, even in the men's group, he'll put it out there and say, brothers, I'm not going to be in today. That's Family. Some of you not see yourself as being a part of us. That, that I only come here to get the word. I need to slap you and you slap with the word. Because if you get the word, you come into the family. If you're getting the word, you, you are excited to be a part of the family. We don't know where you are when we don't see you. We don't know if you're dead or alive until you show up. I say, hi, Miss Tilda. Ah. That's it. Then they will say, nobody check up on me. You didn't tell anybody anything and you don't care if anybody even check on you. Because if you did, you wouldn't function the way you function. And you want to blame and talk about no love not there. If no love is here, then please show us what love is. I want to know what love is. And I want you to show me. Because you see... A relationship, a relationship has two sides to it. And Sister P, if I didn't call you, if I didn't call you, again, a relationship has two sides to it. If I didn't call you, should you be offended and give up even on your faith in God? What should, what's the right thing for you to do? Reach out. If God don't call you, <laughs> Marlon, if God no call you, what you do? God said, God said, call upon me. Seek me while I'm in. He's near you know. But in dead air, and him not touch you and him not do nothing because he wants to say, where is your desire? So God no call you, you no call God. When you understand how important God is, if he doesn't call, you're pressing in. You're seeking. And you're not going to stop until you find him. Like when you read Song of Solomon, and the, the, both of them in, in the story, looking for their lover. And she said, have you seen my lover? And I'm looking, and she said, I went down the street, and I went here, and I look, and I'm looking, I can't find my lover. I'm not stopping until you find your lover. Is God your lover? We need to act like people in God and stop behaving like spoiled children. A relationship is two sides to it. And many times some of you even accuse me of certain things. And you never stop to think. Number one, I am in a human body. The body needs to rest. 
the body puts a lot of limitations on me. And I can only do so much within one day because I am not a single man. I have a wife and I have a son. And during school days, I hardly, you can, you can count on the finger how many times my wife takes him to school. I am the father. I am the one that's supposed to take him to school. I take him and I find great joy in doing it. And I go back and pick him up every day. So you sit down thinking that I am there sitting down waiting on your call and your text. Hmm? How come sister Judy didn't text yet? How come my brother was not text yet? Even Jesus in his body, Christ in the body of Jesus, Go sometime into a solitary place. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah. He's saying that if God is my lover and my lover is in my brother and my sister. Ah. Because when you love each other, you're not just loving the person, you're loving the God in the person. And so if you text me and I didn't respond according to the time that you is there waiting and... Say he's a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know many people leave the ministry because I didn't call him? And guess what? They never call me. And then they go there and they use that. They use that, you know, to, cr to contaminate other people's mind. Oh, he's, he's no pastor and he's no what and whatever. It's a two-way thing. Prayer is a two-way thing. You talk to God and God talk to you. God talk to you and you talk to God. So, there are some other persons, as I said, you know, whenever they go, they will let me know. And as I said, if they don't give me permission to announce it, I am not going to announce it because suppose them decide to go a DR or go look for them boyfriend or look for them girlfriend or their sweetheart and they don't want nobody to know. Like my wife was sharing this thing with me where she saw this news where uh, a guy, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's from St. Vincent, I think. He has his family in St. Vincent and has a woman in Jamaica left and they think that he's gone to work and met in a motor vehicle accident in Jamaica with how many people in the car and him alone dead. Him alone dead. I so Satan set you up and kill you, you know. Now they have to be doing go fund me for bring up the body to St. Vincent. You know how far St. Vincent is from Jamaica? And you leave your wife and children and say you're going to work and buy ticket and gone to Jamaica to have fun in the sun. No sun no there, St. Vincent? <laughs> and notice, Satan kill him down there. The shame. Sin? Sin. I notice, and you notice what, what, what sin does? Sin will always take you further than you want to go. And sin will never stop when you want to stop. 
And it demands that you pay a higher price than you should. So, if somebody can leave St. Vincent to go to Jamaica for a woman, you can leave there to come here for the word. Did you hear what I said a while ago? You can pay plain fear to come and sit down in the presence of the word because this is life. The other people in the vehicle hardly get any scratch. Sit and take him off and bring him and say, I'm going to destroy you. And then on the GoFundMe page, them saying, go up on vacation. Lie. <laughs> Because on the GoFundMe page, you can say, well, he went to Jamaica to look for his sweetheart and he died down there. Can you help us to bring his body up? <laughs> you have all pastors do them things there. People in a church do them things there. So some of them, when they go away, they not tell we. So we don't know. Just as I say. But we're Family. We're supposed, I sh let me rephrase that. We should be a family. We're supposed to be a family in Christ. And the family in Christ is supposed to be stronger than the family in the world. Galatians says, do good unto all men. Once you have the opportunity, do good unto all men, but especially to the old soul of faith. We do not take advantage of each other. We do not defraud each other, but we do good to each other. The scripture says, especially to the old soul of faith. And do not take advantage of my goodness. Not because you know that I am a giver. You use all kind of gimmickry, trickery to get me to give. Because some of us figure out that so some people can't say no. And we just take advantage of them. I told you, we are not your source. God is. God will use us from time to time to be a resource. Do not take advantage of it. Because some of you need to take responsibility. And don't expect that every time you have a need or a bill, we're the one that's supposed to foot the bill. Some of you are careless with how you handle money. And we need to take responsibility. We need to take responsibility. Because God doesn't bless careless people. I'm sorry, I can't take back the bullet once it come out, you know. <laughs> and a professional sniper will stay in a spot for days and weeks for their target. They pee in their clothes where they are. They don't move until that moment and they wait for the wind to be blowing at a certain handle because the wind helped to carry the shot, the bullet, from 200 or 300 or 400, whatever, they are away. And when they fire that, BAM! Yeah, God marks, man. When me fire shot, you better take that and get flat. <laughs> I mean, a whole back shot. Because whatever God wants me to say that will save you from hell, I will not hold it back. So pray for me. And when you get offended, forgive me. Do we have anyone visiting with us today for the first time? How are you? You're good? Good to see you. You were here yesterday? I realized. Okay. Yeah. Today is your birthday. Today, today. Happy birthday. Wow. And, I, and there's a sister. Um, sister Marie's mom 
is celebrating. They're watching from home. She's celebrating today. Today is her birthday. 78 years young. Mm -hmm. You're not that close right there, so now, right? So, <laughs> but happy birthday. Good to have you. Um, anybody else? Did I miss anyone? First time? Stand up for a minute, please. Give us your first name. Your first name? Paul? Oh, good to have you, Paul. Anybody else? Someone from the ministry. Uh, before I do that, uh, who, who, who invited you? Your friend. I don't want your friend to hug you because you know her already. I want somebody else from the ministry to give you a hug. <laughs> you see your brother OJ come to and just. <laughs> brother OJ just come and just. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Good to have you. <laughs> Oh, man, he, he's a sample, right? <laughs> Precious brother. Hmm? Um, I, there's a hmm, few other things, but I will wait for another time, next week or so, to share with you. I want to continue with this teaching and see where we can go with the rest of what the Holy Spirit will deal with us about concerning this teaching. Um, Sister Judy, you are the one? Person from, first name is Pearl? from Grenada, Grenada, pain in the rib area on the inside for over a month. So Pearl, if you're watching right now in Grenada, I am going to send the word to you. As Jesus spoke the word when the centurion, you reach out, and make this request. As the centurion came to Jesus, and Jesus was willing to come to his house, I'm not going to come to your house physically, but you're watching and you're hearing. Faith comes by hearing. I release the word of God right now to your body. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity first. I shut down the spirit of bondage and the spirit of oppression. And Pearl, I command that pain to leave your side right now. I rebuke it. And I command it to leave your body and I command complete restoration of your health, your mobility, and whatever it is that the enemy has been trying to take away from your body, take away from your life. I, dis I, I, I serve, I release in the realm of the spirit right now a cease and desist order. And it's coming from the high courts of heaven. God sign off on it. And in the name of Jesus, I'm not asking Satan if he, sh if he should or would or maybe. I am commanding the devil to let your body go right now. Now. And anyone else that is watching and listening, if there is any sickness or disease or maladies or pain or Im impediments, I rebuke it. And if you agree with me, I command it to let your body go now. Now, be healed in Christ's name. We've been dealing with this topic for a while. It is exposing, it is exposing us. Every teaching that I do, it exposes us. And when we are humble enough to receive it, it changes us. It transforms you. The more I teach on this, as I told you yesterday, we did part one of times and seasons in God, and I'll leave part two for the next fasting meeting. So I'll resume this, and I'm doing that. The Spirit, give me permission to do it. 
the more I teach on this, the more I see that I did hear God. I always hear him. I did hear him. That there is a great, great, great need for the Holy Spirit in the church today. The Holy Spirit has been locked out of the church for a long time now. And we have been deceived to think that a lot of things that we are hearing and seeing, it's the Holy Spirit and it's a lie. Many of our church today rely on music to hype people's senses and they call it spirit. Because naturally, naturally, when you hear music, <laughs> <laughs> and if you notice, even in some places, preachers cannot preach without somebody behind them with, I hate, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I go to places where they are offended with music, I'm offended. I said, please, do not play the music while I'm preaching because it's a distraction. I don't need music. When you're anointed, you don't need no music. And if you're anointed to hear me, you don't need no music. You don't need no singing. It's a lie that singing prepares your heart to receive the word. It's a lie. If that was true, we would see it in the scripture. Jesus never had any praise and worship. <laughs> Which one of the disciples do you think would have been the leader for the praise and worship team? If... <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it would be Thomas. <laughs> but but who, which one of them you think would be the leader? <laughs> and Jesus would say, oh, you know, I want you to prepare the crowd for me. Jesus does show up, and the people show up, and the Bible said as they come, he received them and preached the word to them. He received them and preached the word to them. It's not singing that prepare you to hear the word. It's the... Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I'm quoting from Zechariah chapter 4. And if you want the verse, it's still verse 6. And when I notice in the, what I notice in the scripture is that the people in the scripture, the prophets and individuals, they were not ashamed like the church today to claim the Holy Spirit. To hone the Holy Spirit. Micah said, I am full of power because of the Spirit of the Lord. He said, I am full of power because of the Spirit of the Lord. You hear what he says? I am full of power because of the Spirit of the Lord. Have you honed? Have you honed the Holy Spirit? God gave him to you for you to hone him. Look now. If you think that I'm making this up. There was a day when Jesus, of course, preceding that, he was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness after he was baptized by John in Luke chapter 3. He spent 40 days and 40 nights being tempted of the devil. The Bible said he returned again in the power of what? The Holy Spirit. Because he was full of the Holy Spirit after John baptized him. If you notice, John was filled with the Holy Spirit from in the womb, but not Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that came to identify with us, not John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus, but he didn't come to identify with us. But Jesus did. So Jesus Christ was never filled with the Holy Spirit until after John baptized him. Lord, the heavens were. 
When they were filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room, what happened? You remember what the scripture said? They heard a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It came into the room and filled the room and rest upon each of them. So Jesus, when he came up out of water, the heavens were open. Just like how it opened up, opened up over the upper room that day. And the Holy Spirit came and rest upon him. And after he was now filled... Hours later, he was led up of the same spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. The spirit, yesterday, I said, even your time of temptation, your time of testing comes in a season. Remember, when Satan finished the temptation, remember Jesus, the scripture said, he left Jesus forever. <laughs> he left him until an season. Season. And there are some of you right now, you're in a season of temptation. The question is, will you pass the test? Naturally, there are seasons of tests. It depends on what you re we are required to do in the moment. And after Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness, he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he overcame every temptation. I said, some of you are struggle. Some of you, Satan is about to pop your neck. Oh my God, I can't take no more. When you open your mouth and say that you're defeating yourself, never you let the devil hear that you can't take no more. With Christ in you, anything that Satan brings, you can handle it and more. Go ahead and make my day. Satan must worry when he may contempt you. Trisha, can you hear me today? I said, Satan must worry when he's coming to tempt you. He's not going to leave you. But he must be, he must be stressing. And I said, I have tried so many things. He must sweat when he must contempt you, Marlon. Because he try. He try with all kind of stuff. He try with me. He sent a naked picture to me. And when he sent him, he called my wife and he said, look here. Somebody hide behind Facebook. I believe it might be very well somebody from the ministry. Yeah. Attest me. Because they say, it's imperfect. So they send naked picture to me. When me open the message. And me say, come here honey. Look here. She says, what that? Me say, this person came on the Facebook for how long now? And they have been asking me scriptures, scriptures, questions about scripture. But then all of a sudden they reach a point where they ask me about my penis. Hmm. It's about weird. You don't ask a pastor about, it may not nasty pastor when you ask me about penis. You ask me about the word. And from then I realized, I said, I said, listen to me, I'm not a joker. So then think now that I am joking. So they send naked picture. And things are now, whoa. I called my wife and I said, look here. Husband, proper husband, you involve your wife in a thing. So when you hide the picture, you are look opportunity for sin. When you hide the picture, you are wait for motel eight. But when you call your wife, because you're going to go to motel eight, go meet a woman with your wife. Unless you are going to expose her. You say, come with me. She said, where are we going? I said, come with me. And you go to the hotel, the, the, the motel door, hotel and motel, the same thing. A motel, a rundown, brattle, prostitute place. Infested with prostitute. And you go and knock. And have your wife stand up right behind you. And when you knock the door and you open up in a negligee, uh, she might even meet you naked. When she open the door, you just step away and say, Wife, is see her there. Don't slap her, but see her there. <laughs> Come on, husband. Come on, men of God. Come on, men of God. You see, if Eve, when Satan come to her, it should step out of the way and say, Hadi. Satan would have never had the conversation with Adam that he had with her. Jesus, the scripture said, he returned in the power 
of the Spirit after the temptations. I said he returned in the power of the Spirit. You need the Holy 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 Spirit. He returned again in the power of the Holy Spirit. So watch this, Sister P. While he was being tempted, you know who gave him the strength to overcome? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't stand by and watch you being tempted. He is telling you what you need to do. As a matter of fact, knowing the Holy Spirit, he prepares you. He tells you at a time what is going to happen. And if you can hear him, you will be able to escape. You return in the power of the Spirit. And watch him now. What he was filled with after he was baptized by John 40 days ago, he came into the tabernacle. And when he came into the synagogue, I should say, synagogue, the attendant of the synagogue, the, 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 the scriptures in those days was not like this. It was a scroll. So Isaiah was a scroll by itself. Jeremiah was a scroll by itself. Ezekiel was a scroll by itself. The attendant, watch this. He went. Did he do it on purpose? He went and picked up the scroll of Isaiah and gave it to Jesus. And then Jesus opened the scroll and found himself in the scroll. And he began to read it. Did you ever stop and wonder, why is it when he read it, all eyes were on him? He read it in a way that they have never heard anybody read it before. The way how he read it, they got the idea that he's speaking about himself. When you read scripture, you need to hone it. And Jesus read in the spot, in that place in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61. Hear him, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hone the Holy Spirit. A lot of us, we are even filled and the way how we talk, the way how we behave, we act as if the Holy Spirit is a complete stranger. You need to hone. I am anointed. I am anointed. I have power. I have power. You see, if Paul didn't hone him, the demons wouldn't say, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Ask your neighbor, does demons know you? You think that's a joke? It, demons supposed to know you and know that you are in Christ and know that you know that you know that you know that you have authority over them and that when they're coming, they're supposed to be stressed. When they're coming after you, when the enemy we are work with Satan are come after me, they're supposed to be stressed. God in bed and can't sleep because they can't handle me. The more they threaten me, it's the more I'm anointed. Lord, you have seen their threat. Stretch forth your hand. Let mighty signs and wonders be done. And give us boldness that we may speak your word. Because the threat is to instill fear. If you talk, we're going to bring you to our court. We're going to take legal action. Why legal action? Legal action. Techie! Am I afraid? Am I afraid of court? Am I afraid of judge? Am I afraid of going to prison? I, will, I am willing to go to prison because a lot of them, they have made up a lot of lies. And the lies look like a truth because of how they plan it. It's not a coincidence. It was strategically months and years plan going to it. Just like our Amas. Two years they planned to attack Israel the other day. Terrorists not just get up and strike they study 
Because they want, listen, they want to instill fear when they strike. And if you're going to instill fear, you have to do it strategically. Satan will just come after you today. He goes about like a roaring lion. And he's watching and he's seeking and he's waiting for an opportunity. They plan it. And, and some of you are watching because you come on and you're not to receive the word, but you get accusation against me. You know that I'm speaking the God honest truth. You plan what you plan and then put it in a way to let it look like the fault is on me. I am the one who is at fault. And really, so everything what they have, it's made up. It cannot stick. And I'm not afraid. And I know why I'm saying what I'm saying. If it doesn't concern you, leave it alone and receive the word. And don't worry for me. Don't fret for me. Just pray for me. And me want you to pray proper prayer. How, you, how do you pray for our sent one? I'm not afraid of dying. I am not afraid of dying. Paul says, if I am accused of debt, he says, if I have done anything that is worthy of debt, I'm not afraid of dying. And you know, saying no afraid of dying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Paul, I'm a roughneck, you know? <laughs> Trisha, before he became Paul, as Saul, he was rough. He was zealous. He, he was determined. And when God saved him, God didn't take away the determination. And God didn't take... All God do is just turn around. And for Christ, he was even more. He said, I'm not afraid of dying. If I have done anything worthy of death, if I've done anything worthy of prison, imprisonment, I'm not afraid of going to prison. I would have been the first to hand over myself. I'm serious. And the enemy has been using these people and they're happy to work with the devil to oppose the ministry. You're not opposing Bobby Somers. You're opposing God. Be very careful that you're not fighting against God. Because if I'm not of God, leave me alone. I will come to naught. But there has to be something about me. When God in bed and them a think about me. Then wake up in the morning, them a think about me. Lunch time, them a think about me. Dinner time, them a think about me. Supper time, them a think about me. I feel my song so nobody go take you and go pirate my song. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Wheel and come again. <laughs> <laughs> Satan is afraid of me. Satan know that I'm a force to be reckoned with. He wants to silence me. He wants to shut me up. But he cannot because I'm filled with the spirit. And because of the spirit, I have power, power, power. Sister Kim, you have power. You have power. When you are on Satan's list, it's a good thing. Can I come back in now? <laughs> I'm going to say it again. When you are on Satan's list, it's a good thing. When you're in his black book, it's a good thing. Because whomever he puts in his black book, they're a force. To be reckoned with. And the intent is to get rid of you. Yes. They wanted to get rid of Jesus every day. 
and they seek to lay hands on him, but they could not touch him because the season, his season had not yet come. So even as I said yesterday, I'm going to say it again, your temptation, your persecution, it doesn't just randomly happen. God is in control. That's why you pray and say, deliver us from the evil one and lead us not into temptation for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory so God knows when and he knows how much you can bear and after you have bear what you can bear he said devil back up Job wanted to kill, Satan wanted to kill Job from day one. I mean, wipe him out. One. And God said, you are permitted to touch his body. But his soul, which means his life, it's mine. You don't touch that. You notice, immediately you leave God's presence and touch your body. Boils. Break out all over his body. Naturally, boils take days to develop and reach to the point where it's painful. And in one minute, Job had boils all over and he was in pain. And the Bible said he wrapped himself in sackcloth and ashes. Satan wanted to kill him, but God said, you can touch his body, but the life is mine. And so when God said to Satan and demons around you, you can touch that, but this, don't be afraid of no trial. Don't be afraid of no temptation. Don't be afraid of nothing. Because God, your father, is in control. His eyes is on the sparrows. And he watches over you. Satan must be in stress when he's coming after me. Sweating. Because I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this. I've done this. And he's still teaching the kingdom. I took away the ministry from him. That's what he thought. Because Kem is not the ministry. I took away the ministry from him. I fire him. Satan said, I fire him. <laughs> and you know, that is a big thing in many people's life. When you get fired, it depresses you. It's over. How am I going to manage with the mortgage payment? How am I going to manage with the car payment? Because everything in Canada, you have to pay feet, you know? How am I going to manage with the property tax? How am I going to manage with hydro bill and the, that bill and the, all the bills and the food bill? And Satan thought that I was an orphan. That I was going to worry when he terminate me. Satan did. I said, Satan did, because he thought that my life was built on things. And so now I am going to shut him up. Boy, 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 my mouth get bigger. Let's see what is going to become of him. Behold the dreamer cometh. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. Anybody following me? I'm talking about Joseph. Who was, who was saying that? Not strangers. His brothers. That blood brothers. That came from the same loin. Behold the dreamer comes. Let us kill him. And see what will become of his dream. And God allowed the big brother. Reuben. Said no no no. Don't let us kill him. There is a pit. Let us put him in it. The intent was that he would go back later. And take his brother out of the pit. But God had a, had a plan. When he left him in the pit and went away for a little, 
The rest of the other brother, the other 10, what are the other 11 brother, or, or I should say 10, because Benjamin was the younger, so he was at home with the father. They saw the Ishmaelites coming, and what did they do? They sold him for 20 pieces of silver. They did not know that what they were doing was pushing him closer to the fulfillment of the dream. You don't know that the more you persecute me, the more you come against Bobby Somers, there is a greater anointing. I am getting, I'm reaching further. I'm reaching further. Because up until last year, when that devil do and do, Right? When the devil did what he did, we weren't reaching people in 154 nations. Today, on radio, we are reaching over 150 odd people, 50 odd nations. Not people, 150 odd nations. The more you persecute me, the more I, I said, bring it on, persecute me. Bring the law against me. Lock me up. Because if you lock me up, may I go read some prisoner. Lock me up, may I go read some prison warder. Lock me up, may I go read some police officer. Lock me up. Because you think if me go to prison, me not go talk about Jesus? They lock up Paul. They lock up Paul. And at midnight, <laughs> at midnight, Paul began to sing and worship and pray. And the Bible said the prisoners heard him and everybody around the prison here. And then there was a great earthquake. Do not threaten me. Do not threaten me. Because you're simply fueling me. And I hope you learn from me and the same become true for you too. That when people think that so you're a little weakling, you know, you, they can come and come pick on you as they ever like, you need to introduce them to your big brother. You know who is your big brother? His name is Jesus. <laughs> you know, I grew up, you know. And you're growing up and you have a brother like Marlon. <laughs> Trisha said, don't let me tell you stories. <laughs> and you mess with his sister or his brother. And you find in, in certain family, when you have a brother this tall, they the rest of them. I said, me go tell me big brother upon you or who? Or me go tell me brother. I said, go on. Go on, go tell him. I said, me now beat up your brother. And I said, all right. And then when your brother comes. <laughs> um, we, we never really trouble her. We just say, hi, how are you? And then we said, we, we, I said to her that I like the color of your hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when Satan messes you, say, Satan, I'm going to tell me, big brother, oh. I'm not joking, I'm serious. Jesus is, according to the scripture, Jesus is our elder brother. He says, I am not ashamed to call your brethren. In Hebrews, he's not ashamed to call us brethren. We should not be ashamed to who and him are also as a brother. Because we came from the same home. And when I can't handle it, my brother is invincible. There is no power under heaven that he doesn't have a greater power than it. Ah. Mm. Mm. Holy Spirit, take time with me today. Hmm? No, <laughs> there is a, there is a, a, a very mysterious angel that we, we got introduced to in the scripture. It's very mysterious.
The first time we're introduced to him was in the book of Daniel. It's not Gabriel. I like Gabriel. But, <laughs> Gabriel ain't no warrior. And Gabriel know his place. Gabriel don't put up no fight. Whoa, Gabriel know that he's a messenger. And he just do his thing. But Gabriel know that when he's sent out with a message, and if somebody tried to stop him, he just wait. He no go back. And stay in place. And wait. And Michael. <laughs> it's going to show up. And you see when Michael is engaged in a battle, you know who walk away? Me say, you know who walk away? He's called the great prince of his people. And let me say something to you today as believers. We're never going to be engaged in any physical warfare. We're not going to punch nobody. We're not going to fight nobody. We're not going to slap nobody. We're not going to shoot or chop or whatever. We're not going to. We deal with spiritual warfare. So you look for the spirits behind the scene. Did you know that the angels that are there warring for us, whose command are they under? Michael is called an arch angel. An arch angel means that you're at the top, you're a commander. You're a chief. So you can imagine any angel that is under Michael training and direction. Do not be afraid of anything or anyone. There are angels that are fighting on your behalf. You see all when you're sleeping, they're fighting. They never sleep. They're in this room right now. You can't see them, but they're present. You want to know if they're up here? Come and mess with me right now. Come up here. Come up here for mess with me. Come, come, come. I beg of you. <laughs> People need to understand that there are some of us that God has called and anoint, and we're not afraid of this generation. We're not afraid of politics. We're not afraid of anybody. We're going to stand up like Elijah. We're going to stand up like Elijah. We're going to stand up like Moses. We're going to stand up like Joshua. We're going to stand up like Jesus. We're going to stand up like Paul. We're going to stand up. In the book of Jude, when Moses died, his body was of importance to Satan. I wonder why. <laughs> and the Bible said that when Michael and his angel contended with Satan over the body of Moses, Michael pulled back and the authority that he possesses because he's the angel of the Lord. That authority, the full authority of God is vested in him. He pulled back and he said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Do you understand what power comes out of that? Satan had to back up and leave Moses' body. He wanted Moses' body for people to worship him. And that's why God did not allow them to have any natural funeral for Moses. God himself bury him. Moses was the only one at his funeral. <laughs> and Scott's, Scott's funeral, funeral home lost that package. They didn't get no money. God bury him. 
And the last time, that is the last manifestation, but, but doesn't mean that is the last activity of Michael in the scripture. But in Revelation, it says that when Satan, it giving us an insight of what happened, and, and there's a twofold understanding that you need to under, get from it, that it takes us back for us to understand. Because people always ask the question, when did Satan, when did Satan get cast out of heaven? Was it before man was created or after man was created? What do you think? Let us not talk about it now, but what do you think? <laughs> eh? And Jesus told us that I saw him when he fell. When? And the Bible takes us into Revelation chapter 12 and it says, There was a great sign that appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. My God Almighty, clothed with the sun. That's, you know what that, you know what that, what that symbolizes? Revelation. The sun is illumination and the moon under her feet. And 12 stars as a garland on our head. And then a second sign appeared in heaven. A great red dragon. The woman is pregnant. The dragon wants to kill the woman child. Notice it's not the woman that the dragon wants to kill. So when Satan will come after you and a shan he want to kill, it's where shan a carry. Yes. You think a Bobby Sommer Satan won't kill? You think it's Bobby Sommer Satan won't? You think a Bobby Sommer Satan hit? It's what Bobby is carrying. What about me? Why do you think so many people are against me? Me no have millions of dollars in an account, no way. I don't have any inshore or offshore. <laughs> I don't live in King City. I don't live in anywhere near Vaughan. Or anywhere in certain areas in Toronto. I don't live there. I live all Richmond Hill. <laughs> I don't live there. I live in ordinary areas. Wear ordinary clothes. So why are they so against me? And working over time to get rid of me out of Canada. Why? I mean seriously. Me no wear no walipa bling bling. It's a brother in Canada made this and give it. He's a, he's a, yeah. And he gave it to me for years and I have it. I mean, no, I have nothing, nothing. So why are you after me? Outside, I don't have anything. So it must be, it must be, me say. You right now, right now, you're facing certain pressure. You're facing, you're facing certain temptation. Surely, surely, and and forgive me for calling you Shirley, right? Because you change that name, you give it up, right? So, Anne, do you think that Satan is coming after you because you're white? Do you think that Satan come after me because me black? Do you think that Satan care about you? See, oh, when Satan have us in a in a trap and put us in bondage, where we're looking at people's pigmentation, do you think that Satan care about pigmentation? You know what the Bible says? We have a treasure. Yes. Mr. Do you know what the Bible says? We have a treasure in earthen vessel. Look at your neighbor. I hope they're born again. But look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, something inside of you. They didn't hear you. Kind of slap them, nudge them, pinch them, bite them or something. And say, I'm talking to you. There is something... Even when Satan tempt you, even when Satan wants you to get into loss and certain sin, it's because of what's inside of you. He wants to contaminate it. Do not allow. 
Do not allow the thief to get away. When you think about it, come on, people. Where are some of us coming from? Naturally, where are some of us come from? Some of us coming from being often grew up in some home. We grew up with some relative. Where our parents abandon us and reject us from day one, from the very time we're born. We grew up in certain ways. So why now you are being faced with this kind of a temptation to pull you away? It's not where you come from. It's not who is your parents, because if they kidnap you, when, when your parents is of certain caliber or caliber and they kidnap you, they can make a high ransom. But your pupa no rich, may I talk about your earthly pupa. You, some of you, your earthly pupa are dead, you don't have none. Some of you didn't know none in the first place. So you don't have no great family lineage for them to kidnap you and demand a ransom. If they kidnap you and demand a ransom, they might go dead for you hungry. us that Satan is a thief. The thief come not but to to steal. Notice steal, kill and destroy. His first objective is to steal. So if he's coming after you, Sister Charlene, if he's coming after you, (laughs) it means that there is something that you have that is worthy of him stealing it. Come on, Sister P. Come on, Sister P. It's of great value. He's a thief. I said he's a thief. Can I talk to God's people today? Stop crying when you're being persecuted. And understand that you are valuable. Because if you weren't valuable, Satan wouldn't come through somebody to come after you. He come through your parents. He come through your husband that is slack. He come through your wife that is slack. He come through certain people and he's coming after you. You need to know that there is a treasure. And God is not going to have an investment in you and leave you alone. He put security in place. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is a part of the security team? There are certain places where they have certain paintings. They have certain artifacts. It's in a case, around the case, lasers, outside of the laser is lasers, and layer of lasers, and then they have all kinds of, what you know, steel door and bars and stuff that out, outside of the parameters of the laser. Then outside of that parameter, cameras. And then outside beyond the camera, securities. So there are layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. So for you to go into that vicinity and steal that, you have to be... Not even Tom Cruise can go in there. That is mission... <laughs> Follow me. I'm not just talking about a natural thing. You and I are dead from this world, from sin, from, and we're hidden in Christ. What you say now? First layer is the spirit. Second layer is Christ. Third layer is the Father. 
You're hidden in Christ in God. <laughs> and then outside of that parameter, you have angels. <laughs> you have the word. You have the blood. So hear me today. Satan cannot breach the parameters. He cannot breach the security level. You know why Satan is able to touch some of you? You come out. You, Mr. You, you come out of Christ. You come out, you step out of the Father, you step out of the Son, you step out of the Holy Spirit, you come out from under the blood, you leave the angel, and you go out there all by yourself. And Satan lick you in your head. As long as I stay where I am, Brother Wes, no demon in Canada can touch me. No demon in Africa can touch me. No demon in the world, nowhere. I don't care where they come from, who send them, how they say or send, they cannot touch me unless there is a breach. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, check the parameters. I don't know how I get into that area. But I believe that somebody needed to hear that. And if you don't want it, I'll take it all for myself. Because the things that is going on against me, I need it and I will take it. My testimony is building. Building and building and building and building and building and building and building. And so when we start testify, some of y'all got dropped down. <laughs> and there is no smelling salt in this room. You have any on your brother Jackson? <laughs> you didn't carry it? <laughs> Building and building and building and go ahead, Father, and keep building it and keep building it and keep building it. I'm going to glorify you. I have and I am and I will. I will continue to glorify you. Touch your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, check the parameters. And how do you do it? How do you do it? Eh? How do you do it? How do you do it? With the word and the spirit. Let me touch something, and I know I cannot go too deep with it. <laughs> Can't go too deep with it. We're already deep. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So, the importance of the Holy Spirit, we ask the question who is the Holy Spirit? Why is it that they will not allow the wife or the children of the president? To go out by themselves. Why? Hmm? Yeah. Yep. They, they can kidnap them, take them, and use them. All right? So they have secret service agents protecting them. Right? <laughs> If earthly humans, humans understand certain things because there is threats out there and they put certain things in place to make sure that their children are protected, you feel secure in the environment that you are. Do you understand that before America had enemies, God knew that he had an enemy. You think that he just save us and just leave us out there. And he said, 
go to the supermarket by yourself. No, 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 no. We saw certain videos when Barack Obama, because he, he, was, he was the most radical president the White House was ever introduced to. He stopped at place and bought ice cream, burger. <laughs> so notice now, if he's going to go and buy ice cream in a particular place, I get burger. There was a particular place where he loved their burgers. So from time to time, he didn't send one of the security or somebody to go and get it. He went there by himself. So you know when the president come to the burger place now, wow. But did you know that they did not allow him to come out of the vehicle and just walk in there? Before he come out of that vehicle, the secret service agent goes inside there, <laughs> scout out the parameters, and make sure they go and they look in every, they go even into the bathroom, push the door, look underneath. And then after everything is now checked, they come and say, Mr. President, it's clear. And while they're saying it's clear, one is standing here, one stand over the corner there, one stand up over there, so beside the cashier, and one over there. So, and you see them in the middle of them and you think, so they now look upon you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> try to come close to the president. And they're there, selling bread. Welcome, welcome to Burger Dog. Um, may I take you all? <laughs> <laughs> may, I take you, may I take your order, please? And then, and then let's see this person, and then we'll look up. Yeah. Oh, um, do you know who you are? <laughs> um, yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, before. We came into this room, angels came in and scout out the parameters. That's why we don't have to come here and plead the blood to the east. We don't have to plead the blood to the west. And we don't have to plead the blood to the north and the south. And we don't have to have Trisha run out the steps and I plead the blood. <laughs> and Marlon on the other side, I plead the blood. All those things are foolishness because we don't know who we are. You notice, when we come in here, without singing a song, I open my mouth and say one word, and the atmosphere just, shh. First Corinthians chapter 2, and we, and, and, and we go home. Because, you know, it's a lovely day. Can flip two burgers. And turn some <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> I come out of the vehicle this morning. When we drove up in the parking lot and opened the door, my wife said, oh my gosh, ooh, the wind is strong. This is, how I, this is how I came out of the vehicle. So, this, <laughs> so I have my jacket. I bring it, but I didn't put it on. Didn't put on no hat. And the sister come over. She said, Pastor, where is your jacket? I said, oh, I'm Canadian. <laughs> Hey, hey, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I've, become, I've become climatized, enjoying the weather. Mm. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, people. Let me see if I can take a few moments of your time. Can I? Now watch this. We've been dealing with the answer to this. Because again, as I said, when you think about the importance of a person, it all ties into who the person is. The importance of a person is tied into who they are. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? So who is the Holy Spirit? 
the first introduction is the Spirit of God. So to define him is to understand who is God. Who is God? In the Old Testament, we went through it and we look at the Spirit of God in the Old Testament. You remember? And what I want you to get from that, the summary of looking at the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God in the Old Testament is that the main activity, the main activity of the Spirit of God in the Old Testament was to enable individuals to accomplish what God wants. Can I say that again? The main activity of the Spirit of God in the Old Testament was to enable individuals to accomplish what God wants. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, not by might, not by your resources, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So the main activity of the Spirit of God in the Old Testament was to enable individuals to accomplish what God wants. I can safely say to you that continues in the New Testament also. But that's not the main thing. If I show you, if I tell you, will you believe me? Do you believe what I just told you about a, a, about a while? Do, you, you notice, you remember, in the Old Testament, the first time we're introduced to the Holy Spirit is in Genesis chapter 1. What do we see him doing? Actively bringing creation into being, right? And after that, we see him enabling Joseph. We see him enabling Basilel to build a tabernacle. We see him enabling Balaam to prophesy. We see him enabling Saul after he was anointed to become king. We see him enabling the prophet Azariah to prophesy, Zechariah, the priest enabling Zechariah and Eliud. We see him enabling Ezekiel where visions were concerned. Daniel, all of these persons in enabling them to function, as I said, to accomplish what God wants. Now, when we're introduced to him in the New Testament, what is the main thing that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in the Old Testament is given to do? Anybody want to guess? Going once? Going twice? In the yes, in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the New Testament. Ah, you agree with him? He took it away. <laughs> he said, he said, sonship. Is that true? Is that true? Sister, Pat Sister Patricia, the main activity, the main, so if you say main, that means they're, right? Prime, prime, first, chief, right? There are others. The main activity of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is not just to enable people is to bring us into sonship whereby we cry we record I wish I could get the church to understand that one of the things that is killing many who say they're of God we are victimized by the spirit of orphaned wood so we live in constant fear Constant worry. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? Where am I going to live? What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? And then when we ask that question, pride takes over. Stay with me. Because what we're now doing, we do not trust God. 
we are looking for means and ways how I can provide for myself and how I can protect myself. Orphans. The Holy Spirit. See, we're joking. With many of us, I hear a lot of us speaking in tongues and we live our life in fear speaking in tongues. Because that's not the main thing that the Holy Spirit came. Speaking in tongues have its benefit. I to, I'm telling you, read the scriptures carefully. Speaking in tongues has tremendous benefits to it. And one of the things that the scripture says, when a person speaking an unknown tongue, they're speaking directly to God. And albeit they are edifying their own spirit. So you're building up yourself. And that's not the main thing that the Holy Spirit came to do. Even though some of us, we don't want even want to touch that. We're afraid. We're ashamed of the spirit. We talk spirit by lips, but we never open ourselves to be baptized by him, to be saturated, allow him to dip us into himself. Remain normal. And that's why I do not have much friends. Because most people around me, they're normal. And I cannot have normal friends. You know why? It's not because I'm proudful. Because I'm not normal. You will not enjoy my company. <laughs> the main, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The main activity of the spirit, Asan. Are you awake or are you struggling to, to, to stay awake? Are you with me? The main activity of the Holy Spirit is to bring us into sonship. Stop run down to preach. It's a son that God should make an apostle. It's a son that God should make a prophet. It's a son that God should make an evangelist. It's a son that God should make a pastor. It's a son that God should make a teacher. And because we don't have sons, that's why we see the nastiness that is in the church. Orphans, survivors, and they suck your life out to build themselves. Because orphan feeds off each other. They're like crabs in a bucket. When we're sons, you don't fight each other. You support each other. Because you know that as sons, we are all supposed to do only one will. And that is the will of the Father. So there is no competition. Yes. There is no competition. Yes. I go start church and God not call you to be pastor. Because you won't compete with me. You can't compete with me. Because I am not competing with anybody. And for you to think that you are competing with me, you are dumb. You are foolish. How can you compete with somebody when they're not competing? God is not competing. He's God all by himself. He knows the end from the beginning. He's eternal. <laughs> that when Satan tried to compete with him, he didn't even touch him. He says, Michael... <laughs> Michael, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to deal with Lucifer. <laughs> Michael says, it's not mission impossible. God is never and can never compete because everything and everyone outside of him is created. He's not. God cannot even think it. If he thinks it, he's not God. And when you're representing God and people want to compete with you, people come. You did you know? I am glad. Certain things happen even in 2017. Though on one hand the devil want to use it to destroy me. 
it sifts the ministry. Because did you know that Sunday after Sunday, a lot of especially some men, certain men that showed up in the meeting on Sundays and Tuesday night and fun, they came in with a competitive spirit. Won't compete with me. You do not compete with your teacher. You learn from your teacher. So when your teacher write, faith, what you do? You write it down. Tomorrow morning, students are going to be in this class. Do you think they come inside here to compete with the lecturer or the professor? They pay. They paid thousands of dollars to be a part of this college. And you don't pay your money to come and compete with the professor. You come to do what? You are pursuing a particular area of knowledge. Right? That will bring you into certain skills. You know that that particular professor, he noticed he's a pro. Professor, he might profess <laughs> right? to be skilled in that particular area. So you come to learn from him so that you, him or she, so that you can go and do what you have to do. We find people come in the church and every time you come and I compete with me. You, you, if God sent me to give birth to the ministry until I die, and you come to be a part of it, what should you be doing? Receiving from Moses, Dayton. Receiving from Moses, Abiran, Korah. You're supposed to receive from Moses. Do not argue behind his back. All of us are prophets, and we can all hear from God. We don't need Moses. Moses said, let us don't fight. Let us fill our censer. Let us bring it up before God and let God tell you one more time whom he has chosen to lead this great congregation. You remember how God showed that he chose Moses? He caused the earth to open and swallow up over 200 and how much of them. And where Moses stand up, the earth remain intact. Funeral home lost a lot of money again. <laughs> God killed them and buried them same time. <laughs> and you know what the Spirit has been showing me from the other day? I know before, but it's like the Spirit is reminding me more and more how, um, um, would I say, use the word intense or... I don't know, but, but you, you put whatever word you want to put to it. One other thing, Marlon, that has been going on. Every time I talk, there were those who mock what I say because they do not believe that I'm speaking from God. So I remember when I stood up and I prayed and I said, Father, even if you have to kill me, so be it. So that people will fear you. And I said, somebody's going to drop down dead in this ministry one day. Up until now, them a laugh and them a jeer and them a mock. But mark my word. Mark my word. And you see, even right now where we are, God move us to square one. Some of us still a joke. Some of us still a play. Some of us still a act. And God is going to do something to wake us up. Pray God that it's not you that he has to use as an example. Fear God. Do not let God have to bring you in a position for you to learn to fear him. Fear God. Ask him even dearly. Father, teach me how to fear you. And so they are mocking. And they come and they jeer, even in this room. They come and they jeer, and they come and they jeer. God never sent him. We are going to prove it. Keep on. We talk to you today. One more time, I'm warning you. I'm going to say this one more time. The main activity of the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God in that position, 
There are many positions that the Holy Spirit comes in. There are many positions that the Holy Spirit comes in. And from those positions, there are activities. There are functions that come from that. As the Spirit of God in the Old Testament, he enables individuals to accomplish what God wants done. Because without the Spirit of God, you cannot do what God wants. Without the Spirit of God, you are assuming. Without the Spirit of God is presumption. But when the Spirit of God is upon you, when the Spirit of God is in you, he leads you to do exactly what God wants done. When Bezalel finished building the tabernacle, and when Moses set it up, you remember what the Bible said happened? The glory of God came and sat upon it. What was God saying? I approved. And it was the Spirit of God that enabled him to do that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let me touch a little bit of it and stop. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, when I came to you, when God sent me and I came, did not come with excellent of speech. That was one of my great concern when God told me that he's going to use me to have a ministry in Canada. I was... Would I say comfortable going around the island of Jamaica and preaching? 13 parishes I went to up until the time that close to me coming here, I completed the 14 parishes. The last parish that I went to was St. Elizabeth. All the other parishes I'd gone, to, there were some parishes I've gone time and time again, preaching different areas. In Kingston and St. Andrew. Constitution Hill. Anybody know Constitution Hill in St. Andrew? <laughs> Constitution Hill. You have to have strong constitution to go up at that place. The vehicle better have strong constitution. Because when you go up <laughs> and you are going, you go, if you have no little pop up, pop up, tot 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 vehicle, you know, and you reach certain, and, and that vehicle will stall on you, eh eh. Uh -uh. I go to some places in Jamaica to preach. I wouldn't go there for love or money. <laughs> but the word. So God sent me. And so when God told me, now, you're going to have a minister in Canada. I'm saying, Poof. in Jamaica, I felt comfortable just speaking racha patwa. I know you like Jamaica. Would I say you love Jamaica? You don't love it, but you like it. You know, some people love Jamaica, like Jamaica. You know, they love to go there. Hairy. You have never been? Mm, not yet. Mm, Jamaica is calling you. <laughs> <laughs> you were just sucking. <laughs> so I, I went about, and I preached in Kingston, in church buildings, in conference buildings, in hotels. I preach at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. All over. So I'm comfortable. I'm in my, I'm in my country. I'm in, you know when Abraham is at home? He's with his father. He's with his family. He's among his own kindred. And God said, I'm going to move you out of your comfort zone. And Marlon, my first thought is, how am I going to do that? When I don't speak properly, my grammar has lost its armor. <laughs> <laughs> but look, 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 just like Moses. Like, but God says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. What have I been doing for over 13 years? Look at you. Many of you in this room, there are those of you in this room, you're teachers. So some of you, when you, when you come, do you remember Sister, Sister Bernadette? She said, she used to correct my grammar. And the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. 
write it like you hear it. <laughs> you remember when some of you just come? Cross every T that I leave off there <laughs> and all of that. And then you begin to understand that it's not about the grammar. It's about the spirit. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is life, there is life, there is freedom. That's what matters. Because at the beginning... Even when God called me in Jamaica and he sent me. Because after he called me, he kept me hidden for years. Nobody knew of Bobby Somers or Ralph Somers or Anthony Somers or whatever other name they would call me. Nobody knew of me. He kept me hidden. And then when he released me, sending me out. And you notice he sent me to my own first I went to Jerusalem first before I went to Samaria. I was afraid. I was timid. I was, I, was, I, was, I was intimidated by other people. I was concerned that I didn't have an education. I didn't have a formal education. And God had to speak to me and speak to me strongly. And said, I didn't call you because of an education. I called you because I chose you. And my hand is upon you. And if you trust me, I can take you anywhere and use you. And impact the life of doctors, teachers, lawyers, police officers. Name it. But trust me in you. Now he says, I didn't come with excellence of speech. Or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. That word actually means the mystery of God. It says, for I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says, I was with you in weakness. I was with you in fear. You saw certain things that happened to me. Many of you around me, as I said, God allow certain things to happen for you to see and to know that I am not a joker. You saw what we face and go through, my wife and I. Anything that happened to me happened to her. <laughs> so when the lady I tell her the other day in the store say, because I, I'm in my shorts. She said, my husband right now outside in shorts and slippers. She said, now walk with him because people are going to see <laughs> people, people, people are going to see you with him and think that, you know, something is wrong with you. Because she's saying this kind of a weather, you know, this is not shorts weather. But that's how I felt. And I'm in control of the, the weather. But whatever I face, she go through it with me. And then know Emmanuel, even though he doesn't know much now. But whatever we face, he's in the middle of it. And you saw certain things. And you saw how I behaved myself. Watch it. He said, I, I, he said, he says, he says, he says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of why is that important? That your How many of you in this room... My life has literally, truly impact you. Is, is, it, is that true? Yes. Are you honest? You're not an hypocrite. No. 
Because there are some who say from the time that they meet me and my wife, their life has been a mess. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of you have never heard it, but yeah, yeah. Up until this day, there are some that are saying that from the time they met us, their life has been a mess. You see, those are the ones who would never receive us for who we are. Because if you never receive Jesus, your life will be a mess. And the reason why your life has been impacted, it's not because of my excellent speech. It's not because of the wisdom of man. I have absolutely, Sister Kim, I have no papers from any school. <laughs> None. You have any certificate? You do. Bless you. Do you have a certificate? Bless you. Do you have a certificate? Some of you might even have more than one. I have none. <laughs> That's true, you know, my birth certificate, yes. <laughs> Judy, 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 Judy. <laughs> I do have one. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Judy. I do have one. <laughs> I do have one. I have nothing to show for many school. So, so what qualifies me to be in this position, and God is using me not only to impact people's life in this room and in Canada, but to impact people's life right now, literally around the world. The Spirit of God. And that's why I love him so much. That's why I appreciate him so much. Hear this now. He said the reason why there needed to be a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So that what? Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. In the power of God. What does that power look like? I'll, I'll leave the rest of it. Boy, I'll leave the rest of it. My speech... And my preaching was not with persuasive words of human, but human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God. It was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. I don't know, Trisha, which, which, which um, juncture of the ministry did you show up? Which one of the street? <laughs> midway. So you, you catch us at Midway. Oh, you did? The day when the blackout, you were there? Holy moly. Do you remember the blackout? Yes. Did you remember what I was preaching on when the blackout took place? Marlon, I was talking about the Pope. I was talking about the Catholic Church. And when I, and when I got to the part where I hit the Pope, you know, the Catholic spirit say, <laughs> we're going to kill you. Because of, of course, this is Catholic country. Hmm? So you can't be talking about like that. You were there. Hmm. And there was a Sunday I was teaching. And I took a chair and brought it up on the... 
And I called a lady to come and sit in the chair. And I did a demonstration with her. And that Sunday in that meeting, there was a lady that was in the psych ward. You remember her? Yes. I'm not going to call her name now, but you remember her? Yes. If you were there, you would remember her testimony because she even shared it. Yes. Where is that person right now? But a friend of hers invited her to come to the meeting. And when she leave the psych ward the Saturday night, they release her. The person for years and months during her marriage, she would even lock herself in a room with a knife. The husband was in fear day after day that she's going to kill herself. And Marlon, that Sunday, when the Lord used me to do that demonstration, it wasn't so much for even the sister that I used to sit in the chair. It was for her. You see, when she came down to the front of that building that Sunday, and when I laid my hands on her, she said she felt literally like fire was coming out of my hands. And she screamed, God set her free from the spirit that had controlled her life for years and when her husband and her children thought they would have lost her time and time again, God set her free that Sunday. Completely free, Trisha. We watched for years later. From advance, you know, she happened. And when we come out at midway, we see this person striving and bright and going. And I remember even the person tell us how they're going to celebrate their how much wedding anniversary. And they're inviting my wife and I. They're going to go on a cruise ship. They said, we're going to pay everything for you to come. Because she said, after all that God did through your life for me. You know what she did? When she came at advanced... And, and after God healed her and she became a part and she got baptized. Her husband got baptized. I think, if I, I don't remember if the children got baptized too. She, we started at the, at the school, church and Kennedy. She bought all the CDs from the first meeting up until advance. Every CD. Because she said, I want to go back and, and catch up on everything. And never missed a CD order. As far as I know today, that person gave up on the faith and the situation returned more than it was before. Many of you, you have seen time and time again how God used me to bring healing to people and deliverance to people. You cannot deny it. By the spirit and the power of God. God is not finished. Not finished. Sister Jackie is not finished. Come here, Marlon. Can you move this for me, please? Put it down to the corner. I am not able to pray for as much people as I would like. But I'm going to pray over a few persons. I'm going to pray over a few persons in this room right now. Shirley, Anne, Anne, stand there. Sister Jackie, come. Hallelujah. We, we, we need some more room, but we, 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 we'll, we'll get it. Hmm? We, 
We could go. <laughs> we could go outside. Oh my goodness. There's a few more person that I want. <laughs> There's a few more person that I want, right? Huh? There's a few more person that I want. There's some young people in this room that the Lord has called you into his kingdom at this unique juncture in time for such a time as this. I believe with all of my heart over the years that God has been using me to minister to his people and he has used me to start the ministry even in Jamaica. I am not comparing ourselves to anybody, but I'm just stating something. I have seen in many places that they call church where certain types of activities and certain types of things happen. And even though it happened here, it is in a very small number. It's in a very small number, right? Because I know that God has raised up and sent some of these young persons to be around me like Paul and Timothy, like Paul and Titus, and they're supposed to be impacted by the anointing that is on my life, and they're going to carry it. And while the anointing will be unique to you, but I would have been the person that God used to initiate it. And that there's some of you in this room today, as young people, you will not live careless. You will not live careless. I said, you will not. Your days of living careless is over. It's gone. You have been demanded and called by the Spirit for such a time as this. And God used me. God has put a man in your life that is an example. That is a measurement. Today? Hmm. I don't have any male in the mix up here. So all females I'm seeing up here. Where are the males? They're waiting for me to call them, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're. Watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her. <laughs> Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. I own that. I believe that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. I have prayed for people that are physically blind and see God open their eyes. But I believe that the greater blindness is spiritual blindness. He has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to open the prison doors. The prison doors and to set the captive free. 
and to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. And I'm announcing to somebody today, right now, the door is open. All the weight, all the weight, all the weight that the enemy has brought, right now, you're going to shake yourself. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Today. 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 The 22nd day of October 2023. As I lay my hands upon you, I release the power of God in me and from me to go through your body now and to invade every work of the wicked one. Command you Satan to come out of her. Come out of her. Let her body go. Now Those of you that are standing here right now, I may not be able to even touch all of you. If you're able, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands in a position of receiving. The Spirit saw you before you came in this room. The Spirit knew before today that you were going to be in this room. So the Spirit is not making up anything for you right now. The Spirit saw way ahead. Can I say to you that the Spirit knew years ago that you would have been standing right now on this spot of ground. That you would have been in this room right now. When we didn't saw it. That even when we were at advance and thought at, at midway. And thought that we were going to be there for many more years to come. The spirit saw that the building would have been taken. The spirit saw that the building would have been gone. And square one was a part of the process and the journey. And that you would have been standing in this room right now. Do you believe that? I want you to lift your hands and what the Spirit saw years ago, what the Spirit saw months ago, what the Spirit saw weeks ago, what the Spirit saw days ago, what the Spirit saw yakorobo shatayabo. As you lift your hands right now, I want you to receive your package. Receive it. Roboko shata. Receive Rabo Shata. Receive Rabo Koshatayo Manda Bakosoto. Repo no more soto. Rebabo Kosoto Yababa. My God Almighty. Makotora baba bakashata ya baba. Receive, brother. Receive, brother. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you on the list? 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 You're not a victim. You are not a victim. You are not a victim. You were before. Christ came into the picture. Once you are of Christ, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, never will be a victim. You are a son of the living God. You are a son of the living God. You are precious. You're a value. But even what the enemy meant for evil... God says, I am using it and turning it around for your good. 
Come on, men. Come on, women. Come on, brothers. Come on, sisters. If you're standing down here, if you're standing in your seat, if you're in this spot, if you're in the space, lift your hands. Receive. Receive your package. Receive your package. Receive your package. The package was shipped years ago. It doesn't take long for it to come from heaven to earth. But it came in time and it has to work with the seasons. The seasons that are in God. And I'm announcing in this room right now that you have entered into a season that there is a unique package from God that has been prepared for this season. Receive your package. Receive your package. Receive your package. Receive your package. Somebody receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody receive a fresh, receive a fresh baptism in the Spirit today. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Do it, do it, do it, and do it again. Do it, do it, and do it again. Satan and doesn't belong to you. Satan, 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 and doesn't belong to you. She is property, 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 property of heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, as I lay my hands upon you, Satan, I give you right now an immediate eviction notice. Let her body go. Let her mind go. Let her mind go. Let her body go. Let her life go. Enough is enough. Let her go now. Come out. Release her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to come out of her and enter no more. Enter no more. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Philip Han. Philip Ann, right now, take over her being, take over her life. Father, thank you. Do you believe me? Do you believe me? Do you believe me? Do you believe me? Do you believe me today? Do you believe me today? Makara Baba Shataya Baba. What if I told you? What if I told you? What if I told you that there are packages? that are being delivered in this room right now, courtesy of the Holy Spirit, that the package was prepared before the foundations of the world. Will you, would you believe me? And you're receiving it today. So hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, brother Anthony. That today was impregnated 
was impregnated from before the foundation of the world. That for many of us, we only recognize today because we woke up into it. And it's 22nd of October, 2023. But God saw this day before the foundation of the world. And he knew that you would be in this room. Even Henry, that is, that is he was born in Africa. Shay, Hassan, born in Africa. But God saw you, not in Africa. As a matter of fact, how many of you even in this room were born in Canada? A few of you. Yet, God saw you, Judy, in this room, in Canada. Yet, you would be born in Grenada. And so today, the Holy Spirit is not delivering the package in Grenada. The Holy Spirit is not delivering the package, Henry, in Nigeria. Right in this room right now. Right in this room right now. Right in this room, right now. Right in this room, right now. Makora babo kosha kasata, makasata. Ribobo kosha kasata, na makatora bababa. Receive it, own it, it's yours. Nama Soto. Identify yourself with your package because it's yours, it has your very nature connected to it. The Spirit of God and the angels of God that are assigned to us, they're seeing to it. That what was purpose for you before the very foundation of the world to, um, to, for you to experience it today. That this day was impregnated every single day. God saw it before the foundations of the world. And day by day, new mercies the day is pregnant with. The day is pregnant with new mercies. It's pregnant with grace. It's pregnant with power. It's pregnant with authority. It's pregnant with your breakthrough. Because if you need a breakthrough today, it's not today that God is doing it. So when you understand that, you say, give me this day. Give me this day. My daily bread. My daily bread. What is it that you're supposed to receive right now? What is it that you're supposed to receive right now? What is it that you're supposed to receive right now? What is it that you're supposed to receive right now? Take it. Take it. I cannot receive it for you. But what I can do is to announce to you Behold, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring glad tidings. So I am telling you, I am announcing to you that the season has shifted. And with the shift of the season, there is a package that is assigned to that season. Your package has arrived. Your package has arrived. Your package has arrived. Receive it. 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 Father, thank you for what you're doing in our life right now. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in the life of Hazel right now. Thank you for touching Hazel. And, Father, it's not now that you're doing it. You have already done it, and it's now manifesting. She's receiving her package. And I decree and declare, Father, that her life will never be the same again. Father, thank you. 
thank you for the ministry of the Spirit of God in this room. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit of God in this room. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit of God in this room. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit of God in this room. 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 The Spirit of God. God in this room. The Spirit of God is in this room. Receive, receive, receive. Receive your package. Receive your package. Receive your package. Georgia, 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 receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive, 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 receive. You are not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary person. Step into it. Own it. Receive it. It has your name on it. Spirit of the living God. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in this room. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Ah. I give you my hands for you to use it to demonstrate yourself as you demonstrate yourself through the hands of Moses, through the hands of Elijah, through the hands of the prophet in the Old Testament. You demonstrate yourself through the hands of Jesus. You demonstrate yourself through the hands of the apostles. I give you my hands in my generation in this room right now to demonstrate yourself and to do what needs to be done in this room right now. Receive your power. Package, my friend, receive your package. Receive your package. It's not an accident why you're in this room right now. It's not an accident why you're in this room right now. It's not an accident why you're in this room right now. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the Spirit of God that is in this place. Thank you for what the Spirit of God is doing. Thank you for what the Spirit of God is doing. Thank you for what the Spirit of God is doing. Thank you for what the Spirit of God is doing. We receive, we receive, we receive. We receive. We receive, we receive. We receive. We receive. We receive, we receive, it's the Spirit of God, it is the Spirit of God, it is the Spirit of God, it is the Spirit of God, 
It is the Spirit of God that allows us to touch God and allow God to touch us. That's why Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach and he anoints you to hear. He anoints you to receive. Spirit of God, thank you for Henry's life. And Father, thank you for allowing me to cross path with him. And I thank you for the transformation that is taking place. And it will only intensify in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. The Christ, the Christ, the Christ, the Christ, the Christ. The Christ. Mm. Father, Father, thank you. Thank you for Michael. <laughs> thank you for Megan thank you for their lives as individuals and thank you for their lives as a couple Father today or right now in this room in this moment they are stepping into a new season as wife and husband and as parents, it's going to spill over. It's going to manifest. It's going to demonstrate in your home, in your family. You're going to carry it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it and carry it right now. You step into it. You step into it. Not by feelings. But right now as the word is released, there is a divine shift. There is a divine shift. Mm, a greater weight of glory is coming upon you, Megan. A greater weight of glory is coming upon you. A greater weight of glory is coming upon you, Michael. Receive it. Make room for it. Receive it and carry it. And one of the one of one 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 of the one of the indication in the natural when there is going to be a shift in the spirit is the pressure that come up against you. Reboko shataya bababa, and the scripture says, the scripture says. While we look not at the things that are temporary, because the things that are temporary, it doesn't last forever, but it's an indication based on the pressure of the thing that is coming against you. It tells you that there is about to be a shift that the enemy wants to frustrate. So don't get overwhelmed by the situation around you. Look at, look, 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 look at your season, look at your season, look at your season. Watch this. And the intensity of the outward pressure tells you the weight of glory, the weight of glory, the weight of glory. That is about to sit on you. It fires out way what is coming against you. I said, somebody receive your glory package today. Makarababa, shataya baba baba baba. Receive your glory package today. Receive your glory package today. His name is Paul. <laughs> His name is Paul. And I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if he was born again. I don't know. Sister Alicia invited him. His name is Paul. <laughs> the Spirit of God is doing something. 
Ai, 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 ai. Oh, God. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Father. Weight of glory. It, 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 the scripture is a weight of glory. How do you measure? Because the idea of weight, the idea of weight speaks of a measurement. <laughs> How do you measure God's glory? <laughs> And notice the scripture says, the weight of glory that rests on you while you come under pressure, it always far outweighs. So you cannot compare. You cannot compare what is coming up against you to the glory. You can't. You cannot. And for some of us, it's ears upon ears, not just days and weeks and months, but years upon years of pressure that come against you, that come against you. The intent of the enemy is to literally crush you under the weight of what comes against you. But God, but God, but God. But God, but God, but God. <laughs> and God says, I kept you, I preserve you for this moment. For this moment, 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 that you're going to carry my glory in your generation. A glory that previous generation had not seen before. Didn't the word tell us that the latter glory would be greater? It, it, so, 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 and I am here at this time, in this generation, in this moment, God has raised me up to prepare a people to carry a glory that Abraham heard of, knew that it would have come, but he was never a part of it. Joshua, name it. Gideon, name it. Oh my God. Even, the, even Paul the apostle knew that there were things that he saw by revelation, things that he wrote about, that it did not happen in his time. But he encouraged the church for the church to know that this is what God wants to do. I, you, you remember, he, he, he said, he said, he said, that which I have been apprehended for, I have not yet apprehended it. <laughs> but he said, listen to me. Makura baba, shataya baba. Oi, hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on here. In this room today, men, women, children, sons of God, there is a glory that not even the church in the book of Acts as powerful as they were because that glory is reserved for this generation. Will you, will you sign up? Will you sign up to carry it? Will you sign up to carry it? And that vessel, that treasure, it's an earthen vessel that God wants to display it. And so while this light affliction, <laughs> while this light affliction <laughs> that shows up around you, do not lose focus of what you are carrying. Do not lose focus 
of what you are carrying because it's temporary. So while we look not at the things that are temporary, but look at the things which are eternal, it weighs, it, it, it brings us into this place of carrying a greater weight of glory. Is there anyone in this room today that is saying to God one more time, I am available. I am available to carry your glory in my generation. In my generation. It's going to start in my home. It's going to start in my family. And wherever else you choose, Father, so let it be. So let it be. So let it be. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. And I thank you for this day. And I thank you for what you have spoken in this room. Because the word being spoken, it's important for you to hear. And when you hear, it allows you to know what the season is and what it even looks like. Naturally, many of us rely. When I came here in 2001, and there were few persons that would come and pick me up from where I was staying to take me for breakfast, um, take me for lunch, take me for dinner, and stuff like that. And the majority of these persons' vehicles that, in, that I go into, I would hear this station playing. And I didn't know at the time, 680 News. Hear them, you know. And one of the main reasons why a lot of people keep on 680 News in their car is for what? The news, the traffic news, and the weather news, right? It keeps them in the know. Hallelujah. So one of the things that God has set up for you in the church, he gives some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They are like the weather reporter, the news reporter. So you need to pay attention. When they speak, you know what's going to happen. So it allows you to prepare yourself. Sometimes you hear on the news and they're actually telling you, which road presently right now there's an accident and they will suggest where you should go where you should exit to avoid being caught up in that traffic can you hear the spirit through me today can you hear the spirit through me today i decree and i declare that in this room somebody has stepped into a new season yes. You're going to experience a level of anointing that you had never experienced before. You're going to experience a level of wisdom, a level of revelation, that you have never experienced before. You are going to see certain activities of the spirit you had never experienced before. But because the season has changed mindset has to shift and adjust to accommodate it yes. and the final thing that i will say in this room right now in isaiah chapter 54 when god was speaking to the prophet isaiah of a time of restoration that would come to israel marlin and when god told isaiah to go to them and speak to them and one other thing that he said to them in chapter 54 he said Strengthen your stakes. Lengthen your cards. <laughs> Notice now. Strengthen the stake. The stake is what you put in place when you're going to put up a tent. It, you have to make sure that it is strong. We, 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 at, at our barbecue the other day, a couple of the tents, the wind. <laughs> because they weren't properly secure. So God said, strengthen your stake strengthening the stake how do you do it drive it further down then he says now you're going to lengthen your card what that symbolizes you're going to make room because what he says you're going to break you're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left hand so what you receive from god how much you receive from god is not determined by god it's determined by you. Blessed are those who do what? 
hunger and thirst. So God cannot give you beyond your hunger and God cannot give you beyond your thirst. How hungry are you? How thirsty are you? Determine how much glory you will be able to carry. Father, I thank you for this moment and I thank you again for this day for your people in this room. I don't know if we're still streaming. Thank you for those that are watching and listening. Father, we are willing to drive down the stake a little deeper. We are willing to stretch out and lengthen our cards and make room. Make room. Make room. Because you shall break forth on the right hand and on the left hand. And when you are break forth, no devil, no devil in hell can stop it. Break forth. That it will impact your very whole soul, your very family, and spill over. Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Because of who you are and because of your precious Holy Spirit. In this moment, we're talking about him in the position as the Spirit of God. Thank you for sonship. We receive it. We hone it. And we're not ashamed or afraid to truly, truly call you Father. Father, you are to me. Father, you are to me. And I am your son. So as we leave this room, thank you that what you have released is not going to stay in this room. We're going with it. We're taking it home with us. It's going to go even into our very physical, natural environment, and it's going to have an impact on it. And Father, thank you for those of us that are willing to not only be dipped, but to be saturated. Saturated. That as we go, we are literally dripping, dripping, the very spirit so be it father in the name of your son grace and peace be multiplied unto you people from God our father and the Lord Jesus Christ I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified blessings to you I love you and God's willing we will regroup again in this room next Sunday. And we know that it's not going to be the same meeting that we had today or have today. We know that every time we come together, there is a different wind that is blowing. And so we come with anticipation. We come with high expectation. And we're saying, Father, Father, we don't know how the wind is going to blow. But we know that it's going to blow. And I am, a, I am open for it to take me wherever you wish. So be it, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Bless you. Thank you.